everybody wow what a fantastic opportunity i've got for you this afternoon because i am getting to share with you two red robins now some of you may have seen the last time i got into such trouble um first of all i was showing you things that were a secret secondly people were emailing us and actually messaging and saying please can i buy the dyes and we didn't have any we literally scoured the offices we managed to find eight that were the ones that I got to make samples with. So finally, I can tell you that we've got them now and you'll find them on the website. We've also done a couple of other things that we promised. And this is really the very early journey of Two Red Robins. And it's gonna be for everybody involved, that's you guys at home, not only a massive thank you for joining us at the beginning, but also it's gonna be very exciting. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things. I'd like to, first of all, I'm going to show you this story. So this was one that a friend of mine did. And what she's got here is this lovely stag. Now, the dye itself can be a stag or a doe, and it creates this fabulous fantasy Christmas scene. The robins don't appear anywhere in here. They're in their own little nest in the woodland. But then we bring those robins to life when we take them back into the field of dreams, and this is where we put some snow and ice and frost, and we've actually used texture on here, but I want to just show you those downloads that we promised you. So first of all, let me show you the elements that I've got. So this is the original fence post, and there's a whole set of these that are available for you. I think they're just two pounds if you do want to download them. So the fence posts have now got snow and frost on them, and you've got them in all the different sizes. Even the nails have been frosted, so they look really nice and cold. The bucket has got snow on it, and we've also put snow on the handles. So if you've got these dyes, you don't need to do anything else to them, you don't need to buy any more dyes, they will now work for your winter season. And then um, just to show you, we've, there's the other big buckets that we've got. So you can see how frosty we've made it. This is sort of going out in the first early morning when you you can just see all the, all the frost in the air. That's amazing. And then we've made the tap frosty and we've also frozen the water. So you can have the drips of water actually freezing from the bottom. So they're the downloads, which you'll find those on other highlight craft website and we'll start putting some links up for you so that you know where to go to find things because i have to be honest i'm technically challenged so i'm probably not the best person to help you but we have got people that can and then the other thing i'd like to just share with um so two red robins is a new a brand new company for us and it's a new brand so the company is called highlight crafts two red robins is because, and it came about because I've missed dreadfully over the last few years actually working with Carl and being a family business. So we're going back to being a family business. I'm not leaving Create & Craft permanently. I'm still gonna be looking after Tattered Lace. I'm still a massive fan of this brand. And maybe at some point in the future we might even see a collaboration. But for today, we're gonna focus on two red robins. And I'm actually in my home and our building's still being built. It's not quite finished. Well, it's not quite finished. It's got no walls, so it really isn't finished. But this was one of the first rooms that we renovated when we bought this house 20 years ago. The wallpaper behind me is hand-blocked. This fireplace was covered in gloss paint, and it took more hours than I cared to think about to get it back to the marble. So hopefully over the next few months we can do some little sneaky peeks at some of the places that I go and um, I put my craft things around the house. But for today we're doing a bit of a refit in my craft room. Well it's called a tidy up and so I'm here and um, ready to get demoing. So what I've done is I've printed out the, the reflections. So we call our charisma reflections. So this is our stag, and you'll find him on the website. He actually, I've put my dies in my Craftmaster wallets because it's so easy to find them. It's helping me stay a little bit tidier, but you'll find these. These are also available in different pack sizes. But the, the thing about Red Robins is 
We don't want you to have any waste. So the most important thing is when you open those packets, save everything, because what I've done is I have literally put my packaging inside the wallet so it fits perfectly, choose the appropriate size, that fits in perfectly, my dies are in the back, and then I've got little, the cello bags that the dies come in, I put all my die cuts and I put those in the back there. I just happen to have them all over the table. So it's a really good way of storing the designs. So that is our stag. Here we have our birdhouse, which is just Christmas in a box. Everything there is ready. And I've got both of these lined up and good to go. So I'm going to show you a couple of other ideas. Oh, the other thing is Willow. <laughs> so here's our little Robin that we launched or we had around the time of Field of Dreams. And he's literally, he's just for you. He's not in any collections. He's there all by himself, but he is perfect for this time of year. I've also got some of our basic dies. So you can see these are our foundation dies. I've used those and I've got the floral that I've got here. Now you would be thinking that this is summer or spring, but I'm going to show you how we're going to build it into the design for Christmas and it actually works really well. These little flowers look like um, Christmas roses, so it's a really, really nice design. And then as we get better at doing this, um, we will ask you please to send us some messages. I want to say hello to you. Love to see what you're making. You're already posting some fantastic projects online. And also, it's all about community. So for us, the future is education and community, showing you how to make the most of all those fabulous craft products that we've got in our craft rooms. So the first thing that I've done is I decided I wanted to work with circles because I want to mimic that look and feel of a wreath. So I've taken a piece of A4 cardstock and I've cut an aperture in it. I'm going to talk to you about the order that you work in. So my A4 is there and then I actually took another piece of cardstock and all I've done is overlap it up to the score line, glue it in position, so it does mean that you can see, and I've left this not properly stuck, so I can put my finger on it just so you can see that that's how I've created the back. Now, the reason that I do this is, even if I had a piece of A3 card, I would still consider this method for something that's gonna have quite a lot on the front of it. Because, and think about the logic of this. When this is stood up, this piece here, the actual score line where the, the side of the card is, it's got a lot of weight on the front. So sometimes you can find that, they, I mean, I'm sure this will have happened to you, you'll find that your card will tip or tilt, but it's made less likely to do that because this section is actually double thickness. So we've got what's left of this bit and then the card that we've stuck inside and that double thickness gives us much more stability just there okay so that's one little tip for you then the second thing is how are we going to frame this circle so i've got a few different options that i've got here i'm just going to reach them and i've had to leave i've had to leave my circle dies out so that i made sure i didn't lose the sizes so i'm going to show you this one a very very fine frame it looks really delicate and detailed or I can go with this one. So we hide the red, we keep that frame absolutely pristine and it really is just surrounded almost like a porthole. I can take a white frame and put my narrow gold round the outside edge like that. Or I can move the narrow one away and put a gold one on so we're left with just a tiny white frame all of those work really well so experiment with them so there's a couple of things that are important when you're actually cutting the circles about positioning let's just look at how that would work so the first thing is you need to decide on the size of the die that you're going to work with just get a piece of red card 
So I've taken the second largest of the circle dies from our foundation. So I'm going to just lay that down. And the magnetic shim is great for this because that holds it in place while we're trying to decide on the position. And I'm working with a pro cut machine. So my tattered lace pro cut or kit and caboodle pro cut, absolutely love that machine, particularly because the plate combination is just two plates. It makes it really good. Um, you're, you're going to find that machine on Crate and Craft, and I do believe that it may still be on promotion, so please check that one out. So then, if I want to cut a very, very fine um, border, then the next thing I would do is I would take my next die, and actually I'll pick them up in the wrong order. So the one I've just put down is the narrowest, so I'm just going to lay that, turn that over so you can see it. And it's, it's such a tiny border that when you see this, you almost, uh, you almost can't imagine how small it's going to be. But the fineness that you cut is what looks so elegant. So I would be saying, if you're looking, if you're somebody who likes elegant, neat, very detailed, this is a great one for you. Then the next thing that I did was decide how big the hole was that I wanted, and that was this die. And so I've got all three of them there laid up ready for me to work with. So if the first thing that I want to do is create a very narrow border, I would be taking this out, using these two dies, cutting my border, knowing that the size of the aperture is going to be this big. Now, that is in its own right is absolutely fine, because if I then were to take a smaller panel and cut this, and although my aperture is bigger, what you can still see, and I'm just going to show you this on the other side, is you'll end up just seeing a little bit of the white all the way inside. And as long as you keep that circle, so that the circle fits perfectly, it won't look untidy, so it actually works. And the other thing that occasionally, if it isn't looking good inside I do, is I would put a second circle so that I've sandwiched them together. Okay, now I'm, I know that I can waffle and talk for England, and I want to do more on using your basic dies, but rather than do that right now, I'm going to show you how to make the most of the design elements, because that's the exciting bit. So, I'm going to take all these out, and because I'm holding things up, I am going to glue these in place so that we can see exactly what we're doing. So, let me just line up my circles to make sure I've got a good, a, the right border, and then I can glue this in place. So I'm going to use a tape pen, and we're just going to we're just check in exactly where this works. And this is another thing, that when you've got your dies down, and you're cutting those apertures and frames, use tape to make sure that your circles stay perfect, because what I didn't do when I did mine was I didn't measure my borders, but that didn't matter because I know that the shape that I've got is still going to work. So there we go, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to lift this up now and tape it down. So it's got a little bit of glue down here and a bit more on this side. So it gets stuck properly as we, um, as we go ahead with the design that we're working on. I'm going to pop this onto my frame, so we'll put some glue here, and let's just frame the design, and I'll pop that over that circle. Now, I'm also going to share this with you. It isn't perfect. I know that I could have had it perfect if I spent a little bit more time, but let me show you how I'm going to resolve it. So around here, it's pretty even. We've got a nice white border. To this side, it's slightly off but I know that inside it's really neat. So I went with making sure the inside was neat, knowing that I can adjust the elements on the front. So we're now gonna make Christmas card and we're gonna look at doing a wreath, but the die that I'm working with is my stack. So I'm not surrounded by ivy or holly or anything else. So how are we going to put that and create that design from this? 
Well, first of all, if I go to my career, um, my reflections, I can show you here the three pieces I've got. So I've got the stag itself, I've got the extra piece of decoupage, and then I've got the lovely dough. And she will decoupage over here if you want to, so you can change their faces. But these antlers have been perfectly designed for you to be able to use it to create a swag as we go round. So I've cut a few of them, which are all here. And I've got a full reindeer, and I've put here, I've put him, I've decoupaged his face up, and I've left him with those really elegant antlers. And he could sit just to the front of the card, and you can see that we're really starting to look very Christmassy. I could put my little Robin, Willow, actually right at the top. So he looks like he's actually even nested or in fact getting so he's sitting in amongst our stag. But what we're going to do is we're going to put the robin to one side and use him in a different project. And I'm going to use all these pieces of foliage and the antlers that I've trimmed away to create this border that I want at the bottom so that our stag is framed. And by taking, cutting both antlers, so if I show you, well, let's get one that's not been trimmed, this one. So if you look at both of these, so I've got one piece is there and the other piece is there. So if I put them like this, I'm actually starting to create crescents. So, or I can put them like this. So I'm just going to lay them down and start to do some rethink. Rethink. I don't even know that's a word, but we'll pretend it is. So let's get this on here. And you know, the person who invents um, videos like like um, our Facebook, where we can all chat. Mind you, I guess that would be quite noisy, but um, it would be good. And I. I promise you that going forward, I will make sure I can do some shout outs and show you some, uh, show you some of your work as well. So I'm just going to just lift this up and let me see what a difference that's made. So I've actually just used his antlers to get that little bit of foliage to the side. I'm going to do a little bit more. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to trim off his antlers. So what I'm doing is I'm going behind the foliage so that it's, he's left with his crown. I've now created our dough and I'm about to add this foliage into this design. And this is where it gets exciting. So we haven't had to buy another die. We're making this one earn its place in our stash. So I've got that element that I created there. I'm now going to go into all my little flowers and I'm going to snip into them. And I'm going to take these and I'm just going to put a few of them in behind the design. And I'm not putting lots of them in. I'm just going to let them, and I'm cutting them from either end. So it's a crescent. And if I cut them, so if I cut, this is a crescent, if I cut from this end and this end, I can keep that lovely soft flow that I've got going. And let's just pop you behind there. I think it's going to work well. I'm just going to tuck that in there. And then I need just a couple of these. So I've got a couple of leaves. And I need one flat oh, one. I've got the one from the end, that's the best one. And I'm going to put this in her hair. So we're really joining up the elements of the design. So we're making it so that she looks like, if I just tuck that in between the decoupage, I can do it quickly. She probably could do with another one, in fact, that's a few. We're making it look like she is part of this story. And you can see there, look how pretty she is. So now when I put her on here, Doesn't that look fabulous? 
so you can see all the little things that you can be doing with these elements of the dies. Now I'm going to put my stack to one side. I'm going to take my little robin and I'm just going to put him here. So let's hold him in position and look at how simple that is. So if you are making Christmas cards, just our little willow and some foliage, maybe from an existing die that you've already got with a sentiment stamped in the back of the card or printed would be enough. But what about if we were to add in the birdhouse? So this for me is where it gets exciting. Look at this. I love it when, you know, when making stuff makes you smile and it certainly makes me smile. Look at that. The birdhouse to the side, the little robin, little willow is there at the front. And then we've got the foliage to the side. Or how about this? I'm going to change my card. I'm going to make it so that it opens from the bottom. I'm just going to add a bit more foliage, which means I'm going to have to take another antler off, but it's not painful. So let's do that. So get my antler, have a bit more of you, put the tape there, this flower is here, and please stick these down properly at home because you know what I'm doing here is I've just, I put foam on the back of this, actually no, I'll just use my tape pen. Um, I am just literally putting this together, just looking at it myself to see what else I think it needs, but I'm, I'm liking the look and feel of it. And then my little Robin could go, let's see where he's going to go. I think I quite like the idea of him going right down here at the bottom. And you can see how each of the elements that we've got in these collections just works so perfectly together. So if you bought the Field of Dreams, remember you can now convert it into Christmas. If you didn't get Robins, just the one Robin all by himself is perfect. And he is for all year round. Little Willow is going to become one of our best friends. And then don't just think about your foliage and worry that you haven't got an ivy or a holly because of course that makes things very easy when you come to design. But let's be a little bit more creative. Let's look at some other options as well. And also don't forget that with things like this birdhouse, imagine where that snow is and we recolor it and we put it and we make it into moss. How effective that birdhouse is going to be. So what I want to do in this journey is give you the tools that you need to create fabulous projects, but things that are actually going to earn their place in your stash. You as a crafter are not only one of the most valuable and talented people out there, but as a customer, that's what you deserve and that's what we're going to bring you. So I'm going to go and do some of my Christmas cards because although it is only early June, there is a huge amount to make this year because I've befriended lots of people online and promised that I'll send lots of Christmas cards. So if you are one of those people, I'm already on it. If you're not, send us messages because we want to actually create our community. Tell your friends about two red robins. I went in between all of that. I'm going to go and stick some tuna fish on the barbecue. So what a combination that is. Um, thank you, everybody. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Don't forget that highlight cross. If you click on the image, it will lead you to our fabulous reflections and our, our dies, the exclusives that are not available anywhere else are back in stock.